Good morning, everyone. We're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Nice to see you, Danielle. This is Iman. Hi, Iman. Good to see you. Seeing a lot of familiar faces here and names. Guess I should unmute myself. All right, let me get this right. All right, so this is SACE Service Tracker. Um, here we go. Is everyone a service provider? That's here. A lot of people. This is definitely for service providers. This is the sign in. Don't forget to sign in. I guess you've been told about your information about getting paid if you're still off calendar. Be sure to complete that. All right, so our agenda here is the welcome and introductions, obviously. And then what is Service Tracker and why do we? Why do services need to be tracked? Um, why we would use service, say service tracker and how to use service tracker. Um, so let me just introduce myself. My name is Brian Borsos and I've been the SACE coordinator for the last few years. And I will let the others who are here with me today introduce themselves. I can hop in. I'm Danielle Love, and I manage data for the special education team. And Brian, we can't see your screen. You can't? We cannot. Oh. <laughs> and I'll hand oh. it over to Carol. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for attending. Uh, Carol Fong, Program Supervis Supervisor uh, with Compliance. Is that better? Okay, good. Okay. Do we have any special ed teachers here today? I'm just curious. Yes, I, I mean, see yeah, we, we do have, okay. Because if you're an RSP teacher, especially. Um, I am. Okay. That's um, a service that we should be tracking services for. If you're an SDC teacher, then um, you have the privilege of having your service tracking being done by the schedule because those, those classes are coded. But for RSP teachers, um, it's best. We, we have to track services. Service tracker is probably the easier way. For those of you that have been around and you're not new to San Francisco, you heard at the end of last year that we had this, this service audit that the state had implemented. And that service audit is going to be an annual thing. So if you, there are different ways that services are tracked. You can service track by just simply keeping your own paper method of service tracking, that's fine as long as you service track. Um, you can service track the, the school psychologists and the speech pathologists use a different system that's not service tracker. Um, but for this state audit 
that is required and will be required yearly going forward, if you use a different type of tracking system other than service tracker in SACE, you will have to complete that, that audit manually. Um, so just knowing that it's okay to do it that way, but, but service tracker, as long as you keep current in service tracker, you will not need to do anything at the end of the year when that audit is due. Um, okay. Why do services need to be tracked? So services need to be tracked because we are verifying that we are providing, we were available to provide the service. And so folks will have the option of um, the students will have the option of either participating in that service or not. And if they do participate, that's great, then the service was delivered. If they don't participate because they've either not present or the student refused to participate in the service, that's important to note. And there are codes for that in Service Tracker simply because we, what the state is looking for is of the services that have been agreed to in the IEP, how much of that service has actually been provided? Has it been provided? Has, have you been available or the service provider been available to provide that service? Um, and the student either wasn't there or refused to participate or were we not in compliance and not available to provide that service? So it's verifying that. So we're going to talk a little bit about how to use Service Tracker. Um, and I took this directly from SACE. And I'm going to be very honest with you because I have not used Service Tracker in SACE. So I'm going by this and I'm hoping that those of you that have used it some can um, help to provide some information here. So definitely feel free to speak up and add things, ask questions, and we'll go through this as quickly as possible. With service tracking, you can quickly and easily document the delivery or non-delivery of services as well as assessments. Now, I have to be honest because SACE has a lot of pluses, but there are some minuses in SACE. Service tracker, um, is not, from my experience personally, trying to look people up and, and get information, it's not as user-friendly as I think it could be. Uh, so you may have a different experience with that. I hope you do. But for me, it has not been the most user-friendly thing. It allows providers to provide detailed information to the parent on when services were delivered or not delivered due to absences, along with specific comments on each delivery. This is really a good feature because when we have those notes in SACE, um, we can then look back and get the information that we need. And using Service Tracker verifies that it was done at the time that the service was to be delivered or close to that time that the service was to be delivered. Um, so that's that's another important feature because a lot of times when services are pulled, it's for legal purposes. And any legal type of documentation that we have is the better way to, to be able to verify that we were available and this is the reason why. Or it's also good because it tells us how is the student doing? How, what kind of progress are they making as we have more detail in um, the services and what happened on that particular day? From the summary page, a pie chart displays for each student to see at a glance the percentage of minutes that have been delivered based on the delivery type. So it's all based on what the delivery type is for that student. 
SACE offers Medi-Cal billing service that will export, export the date from Service Tractor directly to SACE billing for the LEA, the, the local education area, um, Medi-Cal reimbursement. And Medi-Cal reimbursement, as we all know, is something that we do use in, in San Francisco, and we need to. Um, so your provider type is very important. So because that's where the Medi-Cal billing piece comes in, especially. We're not going to be able to bill Medi-Cal for teacher services, but we can for, for OT and PT and nursing and all of those other services that are available. So if you're not listed correctly as the service type, and that would go with your, your title in SACE, then let us know because we need to change that so it your title is correct and it is a Medi-Cal billing um, title that's acceptable. So to do service tracker, you would have different menu options. And from service tracker section in the upper navigation bar on SACE, that black toolbar, um, you would just click on service tracker. You would select add deliveries or assessments um, or to view reports and rosters. So you have to create a roster of your students. Um, if you're a SACE billing district, which we are, um, you can track the delivery of supplementary aids as well. Any questions so far? Any comments? Brian, just a quick question. Um, Stephanie was wondering if county schools can use the same tracker. They can, Across yes. district and county, right? Okay. Yes, yes, across the district and county, and even the charter school. And can can track through this. I'm not sure if they can bill um, or how that works, but they can definitely track using this. Um, so quickly filter for specific students by name, school, or service code. This is really blurry, and I don't know why. I'm sorry, um, but you just can you can put in the student's last name. You can put in the service. Um, you can put in the school of attendance. And again, this would be for the students that you're serving. Delivery summary page is a page that looks just like this actually. Um, and it will list all the students that you have by name in order. Um, and the services that are on the service form in the future IEP, that's what it's gonna list. The deliveries can only be added between the service start date and end date. And this is a this is a big deal thing because if the IEP is overdue, you are no longer going to be able to track that service in SACE. Know that. So if you have an overdue IEP, it's it's going to end and you're going to have trouble trying to track that. The total delivered field displays the number of minutes that have been delivered. So if you hover over that link to display the pie chart, and that will tell you that percentage. And when we report to the state in that year end report, it's actually done by percentages. It's not done by numbers of minutes. Um, it ends up being a percentage is what the state is, is looking at. And they want our percentage to be, um, I think, 95% or greater, I think it was. And sadly, our percentage for especially RSP services, if I'm remembering correctly, I may be wrong, I think was 27% reported. So we were very low, but we knew that we would be because we knew that, that that was a service that hadn't been tracked for the most part, but there were some folks who were tracking it. Um, if you're a, a district who's billing, 
and we do, um, the consent column will display, which pulls from the Medi-Cal consent field on the IEP. So when the parent is signing the IEP on that signature page, and there's that question about Medi-Cal, if they check that, it's going to be on there. Um, and those two fields are going to, to exchange information so that they know that that's acceptable. Okay, if you're going to be adding a delivery, the delivery page will display all deliveries that have been added. So if you're going to add, only the user that added the delivery will be able to edit or delete it. So when we go in to look at services, and sometimes we have to pull services um, from delivery pages, we can't make any changes. Only you, as the creator of that page, can edit services or delete services or add or or take anything away for nurses the ability to copy the previous delivery is available as multiple deliveries are generally added per day it's it's also something that i think for nurses they oftentimes have to come in and out of situations and be tracking the the services that they're providing the treatments because any students medical needs can change at any moment in time. So that's a really um, important factor. You can click the comment or case notes icon, icon to quickly view that information. Um, to add a delivery, you're just going to click that add button, add service, um, and add, and it'll give you a list of different options of service types to add. So up to 10 days can be selected at one time when you're delivering services. The delivery page varies depending on the pro provider type. So if you're a, a nurse, you're gonna have things that are medical. If you're an OT, you're gonna have things that relate to OT or PT or whatever your your title is. So you're not going to be able to say that you provided services for something that's outside of your title area. The plan type delivery and school of attendance pulls from the IEP. So if we don't have the correct plan type, if we don't have the correct school of attendance, it's going to be problematic. So making sure that those things, when the IEP is affirmed, are correct is really important. Um, comments and case notes can be added. Anytime you can add comments and case notes, I would advise you to do that, okay? Um, the case notes are only gonna be displayed for the, the user who added it. I will tell you though that those case notes um, can be pulled in legal situations, so know that. Um, Select the attendance code that applies to the specific delivery. So you always wanna make sure that, that whatever that attendance code is, you're gonna put that in. Was it delivered? Was the student absent? Was there a holiday? Now, interestingly enough, in this first pass of this service, um, the service audit that was done by the state, Typically, if a student is absent, then that would count as a delivered service. Just because they're absent, we have no control over that. In this case, they only wanted services that were absolutely delivered. So if a student was absent, we couldn't count that. If it was a holiday, we couldn't count that. If it was things that were outside of our control with that student, or if the student refused the service, we couldn't count that service. Going forward, hopefully we will be able to count that because the intent here, what the state is looking for is, were we available to provide that service as agreed to? Um, and there are circumstances that we are available and there are circumstances where the student is absent or the student refuses and we should not be held accountable for that when it's outside of our control. They didn't do it that way this time, hopefully going forward. And we'll have more information on that as the year goes on. 
So even if the student did not receive the service, it should be added to and documented as to why the service was not delivered. And this is hopefully in this next round at the end of, of this coming school year, this will matter. Um, but I wanna be very transparent here and say that it did not matter in this first round. If it wasn't delivered, it simply was not counted. Hopefully in the future, it will be. This will tie to the delivery report to show how many minutes were not delivered and the reason. And that reason is important to put in there. Okay. Brian, can I ask in the for the reason, is there a drop-down menu? Of there is. There, there is a drop-down menu. So... Um, yeah, and you you select from either the student was absent, it was an excused absence, or it was unexcused absence, or the student refused. Um, I mean, those are all options from that drop down menu. The other thing that was added after the pandemic closures um, was a method of support field that wasn't there previously, and that's that materials were provided for home use. Um, referred to community agents, resources or agency, services provided via Google Hangout, service provided via phone, um, supported parent on digital accommodations, um, and that's twice a su supported student on digital accommodations. So if we are closed, for greater than a, a five-day period again for some reason, um, the services can still be provided and you can document those as being provided using this, this field through technology that we did not have as an option prior to the school closures. Any questions so far? Okay. Wait, Brian? This yes. Um, are you going to take us through like how to create your roster and all that? You know, what's interesting to me is I couldn't find that anywhere. Because it just shows a list of a, I mean, I have, we have kids that are, I have kids on my caseload that are not, I'm not servicing, but I need access to in case I get a new partner. Mm -hmm. um, but I, so I just you're I, not, so I have like 35 kids on my caseload that looks like like if I open up service tracker. And so how many kids should you have on your caseload? Uh I think 23 right now. Okay. So you're listed as a service provider for students that you're actually not providing services to, but may need to if um, something happens, right? Uh or they were kids that were mine last year, but now my partner's gonna take them over. That kind mm -hmm. of thing. Mm -hmm. so, so, I mean, I've changed yeah. him to case manager, but I still have access to their things for a while. Right. So as long as you have access, they're going to show on your roster on that way. Okay. It, we would have to remove you to have them removed. We would have to remove you as a provider. As long as you're listed as a provider. Well, I, that, yeah, I mean, I, I, I requested um, to chase to change the names, you know, the case manager name mm -hmm. to a different person. But right. um, I guess I, there's so many names and, and the way that you deliver is in groups, right? Right. So is there any way to organize that roster into your groups so that it's more convenient to fill these out? Or am I going to have to like search every single name of, you know, 23 and we'll- I think that's a, that's a great question that we need to get clarity on. I don't know, in all honesty, Christine. Okay. But I think that that as long as you are list, I know that as long as you're listed as a provider for that student, they're gonna you're gonna have the ability to track in SACE for that student. Um, so the only way that they wouldn't show is if you're not a provider on there. But you need to be a provider, right? And mm -hmm. so I'm just trying to understand this correctly. So you have these students that, that you may need to provide access. services to. You have to have access to them. Yeah, because we might change our caseloads, right? Right, so I have absolutely. Now, depends on the numbers, if we get other kids, um, you know, So because there's two of us. Right. Um, and but... SACE, SACE doesn't accommodate that kind of stuff 
in my opinion, well at all. Because when they when they do your roster, they're going to do it alphabetically, right? It's just going right. to be there. And oh, you're going to have all these kids. And you may need to, at some point, just at a moment's notice, have access. So you right. need them there, right? Right. But, but, and if they're not there, then it could be problematic going forward when you do need the access. But they don't manage that well. I can, I can send something to them and ask. Um, it'd, be, it'd be great if we could do that. groupings of kids so that you can, you know, like after a group, you can just fill it out instead mm -hmm. of having to search alphabetically through like, you might, you might, might have four kids in a group that are on all different parts of the roster and it's just a pain. Right. right. Let me follow up on that and see what we can find out. Okay. Thank you. Judy, I see you have a hand raised. Hi. Yes, right. I have a kind of similar question to the one before. So um, I'm a school nurse and um, I have a student uh, that I added to my space so that I can edit their present levels and whatnot. Right. And uh, the student is not receiving like, any direct nursing services. Mm -hmm. And then last year, um, I, I was, there was a request for, there was, there was an audit, you know, right? And then right. I, I did not provide direct services to the student, but yet, you know, I did have editing access to the student's IEP in space mm -hmm. um, for a good reason. Um, how does that impact me? Um, should I like just yeah no yeah if you if stuff? if the student did not have nursing services in the service grid on SACE, okay. then okay. you don't have to worry about that at all. Uh, okay. Okay. okay then... So it's only going to pull even though you're listed as a service provider in the services. It's mm -hmm. only going to to note if. You can be on a student's service roster as a provider with no, having no services tied to that student. Um, but as a nurse, you should have two different accounts, Judy. Do you have two different ones? Uh, yes, I do. So we have one where we have like read only access to other students of IEPs. And then the right. other one, like, it's a, it used, we used to call it like a teacher or something. But then, like, yeah, right, they changed it to <laughs> provider account. Yeah. So, you should be listed as a provider only for the students that you provide services to. Um, and then you can access, if, if, for example, you need, for some reason, there's a medical need that gets identified and you need to be, you need access as a provider to a student, then we mm -hmm. can do that immediately and give you that access so that you, it would correlate then to the services that you're providing. Um, but if you're not providing services, you you don't need to be listed as a provider for a student. Okay, but we need. Like, I guess my question is like, my understanding is that we need to be listed as a provider in in order to edit anything in your IEP. Like for example, like under like their present levels, under health. Mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of times a lot of misinformation get entered in health by someone who's not. Um, so, so yeah. yeah, if you're not providing services, I can give you editing access through your oh, site okay. account. So you can, okay. you can do that through your site account. Yeah, Got that'll it. be that would there's no reason not to that you don't that you it shouldn't it doesn't need to be read only for you. you nurses are in a separate situation because medical needs are so different than than a lot of the other needs and they can come and go right i mean a kid can need some medical stuff or you may need to do some stuff um work with staff around medical things that right, is right, right. maybe not a direct service even right. but you should you need to be involved in so you may need to make some changes we can provide you that kind of access through your site account and then you wouldn't have to worry about that. Okay, so. thank you, Brian. And another question I have is, um, let's say like uh, a student was absent and then like families are requesting like, oh, um, so-and-so is absent this day, can you make up this service? Can families technically request that kind of service to be compensatory? Well, it would depend on a couple of things. Mm -hmm. um, we always said no before, 
Okay. But, but we're coming to a bit of a different understanding about that sometimes. So the state is looking at it a little differently. That's another one that I think really, I think that the, um, that's something that the, the school, the department, SPED department supervisor for your level would need to weigh in on that. Okay. Because that's a that's more of a legal thing. And we need to get a, a more clear understanding. Previously, I would have said no without question. But mm -hmm. based on the last information at the end of the last school year, I'm not comfortable just saying no at this moment in time. Okay. Thank you, Brian. You're welcome. Danielle? Yeah, just a couple of written questions that have come in also about absences. Mm -hmm. um, so from Melissa, her understanding is that an excused absence records as if minutes are still owed, but unexcused would indicate the service provider was present, but the student was not. Is that correct? Yeah, yeah that's the way I always understood it as well. Okay. So my they question should. here, though, my thing is that in this last report, and that's why I'm saying I, I'm hesitant to say anything is they didn't care what the reason was. If if the student was absent, whether it was excused or unexcused, it didn't count um, okay. as provided. And my understanding was exactly what Melissa is saying, that if it was an excused absence, then we needed to provide the service or compense that would need to be made up. If it was an unexcused absence, then we didn't need to make that up, but that's not what they did in this this last audit, um, okay. the only audit. So hopefully we'll be getting more clarity on that going forward. We'll have the answers, um, but at but this moment now... in time, I would say to record the reason, and if you if it's done through through um, SACE using service tracker, it's going to have that reason in. And so whatever the state determines going forward in the, the, the end of the year audit, which will be happening, it's going to have it the reason there. So if they say, if they go back to what we always understood, that if it was an unexcused absence, then it doesn't need to be made up. It's as if the re, the service was delivered, it's going to record it that way automatically. That's the advantage of using service tracker. The state and CalPADS have aligned with service tracker in SACE for that report. Um, so it doesn't need to be manually done. So I would say just put it in there. It's a little nebulous right now um, as to how they're going to read it, but we'll be getting more information going forward. On that. And then Stephanie was wondering about your recommendation for how often you're doing this tracking, specifically mm -hmm. with regard to the question about absences, because sometimes unexcused absences get changed to excused absences later. Um, so any thoughts you have there? Yeah, you know, I, I, you know, this is where I really feel the deficit today, because I've never used service tracker myself, and I don't know if it's easy to do every day or if it's something that you may just wanna keep a record, a, a, a manual record of some type, and then every so often go in and update it on service tracker. I'm not sure how that works, um, but I could see it being done either way. And I think that that's another really good point that Stephanie's bringing up that oftentimes an unexcused absence will be changed to excuse. So it's not going to, and I'll tell you this, it's not going to correlate then with what is in synergy. And if it doesn't correlate with what's in synergy, it's going to throw off our CalPADS reporting. So it's, 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 it might be better to do it on a weekly basis um, after the fact so that maybe a hand one, I know that's more work. I don't, I don't know what to tell you with that either. But and maybe just those those instances of errors are okay, and we can deal with the errors. So I think whatever works the easiest for the staff who are doing it um, and actually putting in the information, I would go with that at this point. Okay. I just think Stephanie, that it's best if we can get get it going. Yeah, <laughs> Stephanie, Melissa, if you had any follow ups, please feel free to jump in. 
No, Brian, I was just wondering, this is Stephanie, sorry. Mm -hmm. um, because, you know, at the last minute, everybody was trying to figure this out and it was really right. a mess. And I'm someone that, you know, I'm a scheduler. So I like to have like things already like, okay, at two o'clock when I have my last class right after that, I'm going to do this. So is there any way to do a report that compares the two what's in synergy and what's in say so that we can like kind of match it up? Is there anything like that that we can do? I, I can't. I know that much. I my my synergy access is very limited, um, thankfully, um, <laughs> to be honest. Um, so I don't. I would imagine that there may be a way to do a comparison report, but I I don't know of any, um, especially from the synergy side. And I don't know. In all honesty, again, here's transparency. I don't know Service Tracker well enough to to fully understand how those reports get run through Service Tracker. Uh, there is supposed to be something through Service Tracker that you could do that, um, according to what I read, but I've never done it, so um, I don't know about that. So, all right, thank you. This is um, Carol. I'm just wondering if we approach it from this perspective that the service tracker is like taking attendance uh, as a classroom teacher, that daily is probably much more efficient than to go back and create another internal log and then transferring that log information onto SACE. So anything that could uh, be done immediately without another creation of another internal log sounds um, logical to me. And I think if we're talking about the instances of uh, changing of absences from excuse to unexcused or the vice versa, uh, those are kind of percentage that are pretty low. I know it does happen, but it's not like it's gonna be 80% of your attendance that's gonna end up being inaccurate. So I, I would think until we get clarity on that uh, to just do it daily. Uh, and think of it as an attendance, uh, that you're taking attendance basically of your kids uh, by entering into the uh, service tracker. Well, the thing is about that, Carol, I appreciate your comment, is I've been in a lot of IEP meetings where, you know, we're talking about attendance and the parent is asking for us to make, you know, like, oh, they were, there was something going on or this or that, or we're getting it excused. And all of a sudden there's like 20 excused days. So random days. And so, and I've been in a lot of meetings where that happened. So that's why I was wondering about that whole thing. I, I do think maybe, I don't think there's really a resolute, I'm one to do it daily, but I don't think there's, so I agree with you for my, for me, I agree it daily would be great, but I'm wondering overall if maybe weekly is even better. Yeah, I, I think that's a good point. Think about it. Yeah, yeah, good question for attendance office, because I think there are policy about changing an excuse to uh, unexcused to excuse a certain time frame. You cannot go back half a year later and say, change all those back to excuse. So that may be something we can investigate through the attendance office, because there are mm -hmm. legal language governing attendance, because we report attendance for revenue, right, for the district. Right. So there I, some language governing that. Yeah, that, may, that would make sense to me, that there must be a time frame regarding that as well. well also some kids um, may are tardy and they do miss your group but they're there for the school day so i think you just have to reflect whether they were there for your day like when you are scheduled to see them yeah, yeah i think it's i think if we do it that way and we look at it as a as a daily thing or as a quickly thing um and just what happened in your situation so if they were tardy and they missed yours they were tardy they missed yours. Uh, you know, yeah. I I just think let's not I I I I'm hesitant to tell people to get too terribly involved with with all of this and whatever the reason, just put it down and let it be. And because it's a new, this is a new thing really, where the services, the the report, that audit thing, they've threatened it for years, but they never implemented it. Now they've implemented it. We really don't know yet exactly how they're going to be looking at this going forward and using it and and i think that it just is what it is and you know let's let's just get it going <laughs> so that people are more comfortable with it and know that that 
yeah, there could be differences. There could be changes. There could be some things that are wrong, but we can try to work on that as we go along and, and make it as easy as possible instead of making it harder. I don't know. That's just me. You can also do bulk delivery. And I think I read that it's up to 10 students, if I'm looking so at this. This would be like your groupings, right? Right. So you could enter, you could do it by group name, by service code, delivery type, or you could develop a group yourself. How do you get the individual kids into that group? Because I've been kind of messing around with it and I can't it says enter group and then you just say create group name but i don't know what you put in there for the group name do you put the so, last names of the kids do you what do you i think when you do that when you create that i think then you have to come down to the next one of of enter after you have the the group name you just enter that group name and then you can pr you can list the kids i think it's in this I one we figure out how to list the kids I was, I was trying to mess around with it yeah um, because it says, well, maybe if I. I think well, this is where you make the group and then then you're entering that name that you made the group. Right, right. Like, yeah, morning. Yeah, whatever it could be. Yeah. But I just haven't been able to figure out. Maybe I have to fill out all the little. Yeah, codes. you know. No, see, it doesn't give you like access to each individual kid. That's what's so weird. It's like. So can you add my. So there's not a way it just says end. group name, service yeah, code, like specialized academic instruction and delivery group, but it doesn't give you like, how do you, how so do it you, says, how you put the kids in the group? So it says that the service code and delivery type, the service, select the service code. So it would have to be all the same service code. Specialized academic instruction, right? Yeah. RSP and then delivery is group, but then the group name, I mean, do you just, I don't know how you get the names of the kids in the group so that it starts so I, tracking. I think first you have to go to that bulk delivery and add the group. And so you yeah. name the group. Let me. And then it wouldn't let you do that? Uh, no, bulk delivery, I see it doesn't, oh, I add group. Because the only option it gives you is to add group. Right, and then I think after you add the group. Then you get to that you, same group name, service code, delivery, the same thing that you are right. at. So but then, you won't add, can't add the individual kids. So how do they know who your group is and who's so included I, in that group? I think you would you would add the service code I did that, that. It just says. And save. And then. Maybe it, let me, if I save it, maybe it'll do it now. Delivery group. So how do you put, how do you put the group together, right? I don't, yeah. Do I, do I mean, maybe the that last name. Maybe it, maybe it pulls from the, the service code for the students on your caseload. It's supposed to, and sorry, I'm, I found a guide. Um, and then there's supposed to be a manage students in the group icon to click on. What? It does not have that on my manage students. Hmm. So this is, this, is, this is what I was asking about before. Can you group yeah. kids so that it can make it a lot easier? But um, I don't see and how you can add kids on mine. So once the group has been added, Click the edit students icon to add students to the group. Okay, let me, uh, so let me say more. Okay, more. I'm just so once the end. group, you, you add the group, then you click edit students icon. Is, do you see an edit students Melissa's icon? Melissa's saying it's the little blue person and offering to make a screencastify to show us how to do this. See, oh, maybe, oh gosh, I don't know. Maybe, maybe if you, oh, okay. I think I know how to do it now, maybe. Ooh, I don't know. Yeah, okay, so I know how to do it now. All right, so when you go to, when you enter all your group name, then when you, you get this little thing that says eight o'clock group, specialized academic instruction, and you click on the little person icon, there's like a pencil, the, the, the airplane, yeah. the person and the trash. So then if you click on that person, then all the, um, all the kids you can enter you can click on the kids that are going to be in that group so then you can add the students that way yeah good, so good, for good, anybody good. who's going to be tracking multiple kids in multiple groups then i i've always done it on paper and and but 
I, I'm going to change. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it would be great because, you know, I think if you can do it this way, it would expediate it, and especially if you can bulk deliver. That's yeah, ideal. Yeah, that would be helpful. I mean, I still will take notes because I need to know where I am. There's so many groups you need to know where you leave off for the day. Right. Before, but... Okay. Okay, so that's... So then the service okay. code, the bulk delivery page will display the groups that have been created to edit an existing group name or criteria, the edit, of course, those are the easy things. Um, to delete it, you delete. Edit students, so it is the person, perfect. Yeah, just click on the little person. And then you can bulk deliver, deliver. which is great. Yeah. All right, good, 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 thank you. And then assessments. Now, this is the part that I am totally unfamiliar with, but assessments can be done the same way. To add an assessment, click the deliver assessment icon, and then you can create these same kinds of things to track the assessments that have been done. Um, Usually you have to give all that information to the teachers directly so they can yeah. do it on their report cards. Yeah, so I'm it's just it's available in there to do just so people are aware of that. Um, and then you would se select the assessment type. I don't know if anyone uses this in terms of tracking or not, but it can be done through service tracker on face, I guess is the, the bottom line here. Um, and this would be for initials, annuals, triennials any amendments or evaluations or anything like that. If there's an FBA being done, an FAA, ERMS, um, any other kinds of service. And then you can actually also generate reports through Service Tracker. So you would go in and, and select the type of report that you want. If you want deliveries, that's the first one. Um, or you can do deliveries with case notes. Um, over delivered is another one that you can can choose. And over delivered is something that the state will look at because if if we have services that are in the IEP for let's say 360 minutes weekly of SAI, and we track that we have delivered more than that 360 minutes, we get dinged for that because then it's over delivering of services to students. And they look at that the same way that the state looks at it in the same way that they look at services not being delivered. So just so you're aware, stay within the, the allotment of the agreed to services of the IEP. Um, as you're kind of damned if you do and damned if you don't in that way when you think about it. Um, so the, the choices are deliveries, over-delivered, absences, unscheduled time. So sometimes when you're making up time, you're going to have to do that at a different time than it was scheduled. The assessments, del delivery with case notes, because you get time to provide those case notes. Um, supplementary services and some supplementary services with case notes. Uh, and your rosters, you can... We can look up a roster. To look up someone's roster, we need the name of that provider. Um, and we need that that month or date range. Now, if it's it can't be any more than a month. So if we need to look up a year's worth of services, and we do sometimes, we have to do it by month. So we can only the the month, one month is the 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 most that we can look at a time um, but we can do less than a month that frustrates me because they often want a year's worth anyway we can print rosters to display the students deliveries so we can um, anytime there we have deliveries that are in SACE we can actually print those rosters so that they can be signed each month. Um, and that's for billing purposes. The reason that people don't like to use SAFE for Medi-Cal Medi 
um, billing is because it's individual students and these signatures that are required by the administrator are required to be an actual ink signature um, on every one of those services that were delivered. So it's um, that's why speech and some others, um, psych has moved on to using a different tracking system paradigm um, because it's it doesn't require all of those signatures. But just know that for every every service that is delivered in SACE that's Medi-Cal billable, the supervisor, one of the supervisors here at central office is required to sign every page individually. Hey, Brian, on that note, a related question, um, just clarifying that DIS and ARMS providers are tracking their own services or case managers are tracking those? Yeah, so those would be, no, those would be tracked through the, the ARMS or DIS, and that would be done through Illuminate for DIS. I'm not sure how they track the ERM services because those are county folks that don't actually work for the district. Okay. So I'm not sure how they're doing that, but that's a whole separate system, I'm sure. And the SLPs? DIS, SLPs also use Paradigm. Great. So they're, they're done separately as well. You. Um, you can feel free to contact us with questions. For sure, going forward, there are some things that we we definitely need to follow up on. SACE help um, is really behind because Rodora, I'm not sure if any if you all know this, but Rodora has left us. She's no longer with the district. Um, so right now we're sort of just myself and Danielle, and we're trying. <laughs> um, you can also, if you have questions that are systematic kinds of questions, and that question of of um, those, you know, classifying kids in an order other than alpha order on your your roster for the kids that you don't actually provide services for directly, um, if there's a way to to group them separately really is something that we need to contact San Joaquin County Office of Ed about um, with their safe support. And I am happy to do that. If more than just I do that, it probably would get their attention better in all honesty to think of kind of ways that they could restructure SACE to provide that. Um, and I think our time is up, right? Or almost. Any other questions? Just one comment, another comment. I tried to go in to like the group setting. So you can only do the group setting if everyone's in attendance. Otherwise you're gonna to have to do it individually. Oh. So something to know. That is a, that's an important part actually to know mm -hmm. that if you have kids that are not present, it's gonna mess up your group. Your bulk, yeah. Yeah, your bulk. Yeah. That's not fun. No, yeah. there's been lots of absences because of the, the uh, that's problem. hard to that would really be hard. That's another thing that we should uh, talk to, to SACE in San Joaquin about because that's really that that could happen anytime. All the time. Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. That's a, that's a little crazy. But oh, the other thing messing around I noticed too is that it might be best to just do it weekly because you can enter up to 10 dates um in the oh. service grid so if they're okay. there for like 10 days in a row you just do it once for 10 days mm -hmm. so if you keep a paper one anyway um it might be a better way of doing it all at once so it is another option that if yeah. you're keeping a paper one anyway you right. could hold on to that and then you could just set aside a specific time on a regular right. basis to enter all of it. And that may be preferable to some folks. I got that. Anything else? Hi, Brian. I had a question about whether there's gonna be messaging going out to SPED departments about this need to start using Service Tracker. I certainly hope so. 
um, <laughs> I, I think we have a meeting, we have that Monday meeting. Um, and I hope that there, I think that the messaging really has to come out from the directors and from Gene uh, about the importance of this and why we, we need to do it. Um, I, you know, we can say it all we want at our levels, but I, I really think that people need to understand that the, the real intent of tracking services is for legal purposes. And it's, it is something that you want to always be able to, to be defensible about because it's, it's saying that you're doing your job. That's really what it's saying, um, that you've been available. If the kid is absent, if the kid is, is not cooperative, that's a different issue. And that's what this allows for. And, 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 and I just think that we always get blamed for everything anyway. <laughs> this would help us in, in that way of recognizing that we were available and, and we were, we were willing to do it. it, it this, there are situations where it's out of our hands. Um, and also there are situations where we do need to make up the service for whatever kind of reason. And we could differentiate between that instead of people getting blanket settlements that can be, you know, excessive in my mind. <laughs> you just have to be honest about that too. Anything else? So we can find documentation um, like on the SACE website, all the stuff that says like training materials, like. Yeah, I can... and I can show you that, Nick, on Monday okay. when we meet. Okay, yeah. you'll show it on Monday too? Okay, awesome, yeah. Because yeah, I just wanted to dig into it and start reading and learning about it. So, okay, thank you. Yeah, I'll, I'll show you that. Anything else? All right. Thank you. Thank you for your participation. I really appreciate it. Take care. <laughs>